there. Ben Bowers, the spirit specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about libations, Yorkshire spiced rum, and also piña, uh, the pineapple infused spiced rum that they also produced. Relatively new company to the market, um, and also based in Yorkshire, God's own country, so uh, you're probably aware anything from Yorkshire is the absolute best thing in the universe. I'm not Yorkshire born and bred, my wife is, um, but I'm fully aware that uh, anything from Yorkshire is where it's at. So before I tell you what these two taste like, uh, let me tell you about the brand itself. Libations was launched in December 2019 by Rory Armstrong and Chloe Potter to introduce a British spiced rum to an already growing market, using the majority of ingredients from the Yorkshire region. Unlike other British rum brands that transport already matured Caribbean rum into the country, Libations use a 95% alcohol base rum spirit sourced from the Diamond Distillery in Guyana. That base spirit is then redistilled with Yorkshire Heather, Madagascan Vanilla, Cinnamon, Clove and Orange Peel at the Yorkshire Dales Distillery near Leyburn, before briefly vessel aging with English oak staves and a blending with low water content Yorkshire honey to be bottled at 41.5% ABV. Libations Piña is a pineapple infused version of the spiced rum, which dials down the heather, clove and cinnamon quantities of the regular spiced rum to allow the infusion of whole white Montelurio pineapples to take full effect. The essential oils from the bark and the sweetness of the flesh are allowed to come to the fore, before again bottling at 41.5% ABV. So, interesting story behind that, mainly with regards to the fact that they're using this base spirit. Rather than bringing an already partly matured rum or a fully matured rum that's a few years old, they're taking a essentially new make spirit from the diamond distillery and then working with it themselves. So not many places, I can't think of it actually anywhere kind of outside of the Caribbean that's doing that already. So this is the spiced rum. I fortunately have a bit of a sample bottle. They do 20 CLs as well, which I don't have in store yet, but um, they've given me one to do the samples and also for my customers to try. Um, so the vessel aging, uh, which sort of comes across as a bit of a technical term, um, basically what they're doing is um, they're, they're sort of doing almost like a speed aging. So they're essentially putting that redistilled spirit that's had the uh, Madagascan vanilla and the heather and all that lot, they're putting it into a tank that's almost full of staves of English oak that are being charred, um, sort of so like X barrels as well. And they're leaving it in there for a short amount of time. So it's sort of like up to a couple of months, but it's because of the amount of wood that's in contact with the liquid, there is a lot of maturation going on in a very short amount of time. They do add a little bit of color, but that is literally just to maintain a consistency of color throughout their batches. So what I have on the shelf at the moment is batch, 12 of that one, and I think I actually had another one that said it was batch six, uh, whereas the Pina is, doesn't actually have a batch on it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a combination of batches, so they are adding a little bit of color so that it always looks the same all the way through. However, coloring, ah, whatever. If you're adding that for um, uh, aesthetic reasons, not a problem at all. Coloring, I don't really think affects flavor that much, although I do kind of pick it up a little bit on cheaper whiskies. It might just be because they're cheaper whiskies. Anyway, most important thing is, does it taste good? Let's see what it's like on the nose. On the nose, very vanilla -y. Um so Diamond Distillery, uh, you probably, if you're into your rums, you've probably heard of El Dorado, which is probably the biggest brand that Diamond Distillery, so Diamond Distillery is the only distillery left on Guyana, but they do a lot of rums for a lot, it's kind of a workhorse distillery, it's absolutely massive. And they do a lot of um, rum production for other rum brands that you might not be aware it's from. So basically anywhere that's from, anywhere that says on the label it's using Guyana rum, it's from that one distillery on the banks of the Demerara River. I do have a joke about the Demerara River um, and Demerara sugar I'm not gonna tell it you now if you want to know what that joke is it's pretty awful uh, not rude it's just a bad joke um, then I can definitely put that in via a DM if you want me to send it to you it's funny but dreadful um, so um, very kind of brown sugary you know El Dorado is a real kind of like uh, coffee very much brown sugar almost caramelized brown sugar and, but on here it's much more vanilla -y. you get a little bit of the sweet spice coming through. Clove kind of dominates a little bit, but the cinnamon and nutmeg is there. Don't really get the honey effect. Um, and the heather is giving it a little bit of spiciness, but it's quite well balanced. The, the danger with heather, and there are a few whiskey liqueurs out there that use heather, it can overpower. It can be a bit too, a bit like lavender, um, and also elderflower to an extent as well. It's one of those kind of flavors that if you don't get the balance right, you either get nothing at all or it just dominates everything. And it's 
kind of there in the background, but it's not too full on, which is nice. But the honey as well, sometimes honey liqueurs, that sort of thing. Honey can sometimes overpower or be like almost a fake sweetness. It sort of depends on the, the amount of honey that you use and also the type of honey. And it's, it's there, but again, it's in the background. It's quite nicely balanced. It's on the nose, it's relatively light. You know, the spiciness is actually at the fore. The, the sort of clove, cinnamon, nutmeg is not dominating, but it's definitely more upfront than what you would expect the sweeter elements to be. On the palate, on the palate it's similar to the nose, if not ramped up even more. So initially it's quite clovey. I struggle with cloves a little bit. Again, that can sometimes be a bit too dominating. And this does start quite clovey and nothing else. It's pretty much clove and then all the other flavors come in towards the end. So you get a burst of clove, the cinnamon and nutmeg follow, particularly that cinnamon, and it's not a sweet cinnamon, it's kind of like, you know, a semi, do you get semi dry spice? It's more of a dry cinnamon, and then the honey and the vanilla and that little touch of heather come through about halfway through the palate, and you actually finish off on quite a, quite a thick syrupy honeyness, but not syrupy, sugary sweet. It's very well balanced. This is definitely on the spicier side of spiced rums. Spiced rums are an interesting category. I love spiced rums, but they can go in very, very different directions. You can get your really Christmas cakey spiced rum. You can get your really sugary sweet, like loads of sugar, a little bit of spice to make it kind of not like a liqueur, but it's still really, really sweet. Or there's others like say Burning Barn or um, the Compagnie des Andes spiced, which really are like, we're gonna go spicy as in chili spice. So we're gonna use black pepper, we're gonna use chili flakes, that sort of thing. And it's almost quite dry. So spice rum goes in very different directions. And this starts off as though it's gonna go down that quite spicy route in terms of we've got clove, clove up front and it, it could continue down that route. But actually the honey and the vanilla um, and that uh, sort of sweeter character, actually pull it back and put it more in the middle ground. This is not a sweet spiced rum. If you like, uh, let's go for the Dear Bless Clementine, the Chairman's Reserve spiced rum, that kind of sweeter Christmas cakey, the spices that are in this don't take it down that Christmas cake route. They're too dry spice to go down that sugary sweet. So if you like a spiced rum, I mean, Captain Morgan spiced is very, very popular, but it's so sugary sweet. It's, it's like a liqueur. This is put, not going down that route, but it's not going down the super dry, super spicy. It's actually quite well balanced, but it's different enough that it stands out and makes it interesting. I get a lot of people coming in the shop going, normally for a present, and it's like, oh, they like spiced rum. And it is actually quite difficult to pick a spiced rum because people tend to go either sweet or either spicy. And this sort of sits in the middle. So I think this actually will work quite well in terms of giving people that sweetness that they're looking for if they like the sweeter side, but actually there's that clovey spicy element in there for the people that like it slightly dry. It's very well balanced. The finish because of that spice, that clove element. And clove is the dominating um, flavor here, but it's not dominating over everything. It's just that's at the forefront and then all the other flavors are kind of coming up the back. Um, because of that clovey element, it does create some re really good kind of interesting finish that does last long. If you don't like cloves, if you're not a clove type person, you don't like kind of cloves in your ham at Christmas and all that lot, it's probably a little bit too clovey. But if you like spiced rums generally, I think you're gonna be uh, absolutely fine with this. So let's now try the piña, um, which as I say, just dials down, well, they say they dial down the spiciness to allow the pineapple element to come through. Now, I cannot help but compare this to the plantation pineapple rum, um, which is not a spiced rum. It is uh, white rum with the bark, dark one with the flesh, or the other way around, I can never remember which one, and then marry together. It's not a spiced rum, it is a pineapple rum, whereas this is a pineapple spiced rum. But it'd be very interesting to see, because the clove element in the spiced rum could quite easily overpower. If you just put pineapples in that, it's gonna overpower that pineapple flavor because while it's sweet and sugary and not syrupy, but you know, pineapple is quite delicate, the clove element in that is that kind of intense, which probably makes it sound more clove than it actually is. But the clove element in that is quite powerful, it's gonna kill pineapple. So I'm glad that they've gone, oh, we didn't just add pineapple into it. They actually said, yes, we've dialed down those spicy flavors to allow the pineapple to come through. So on the nose, 
straight away fresh pineapple but really really fresh pineapple flesh like freshly cut uh, a fresh pineapple a really fresh pineapple you've cut it the juices are kind of spilling onto the counter chopping board onto the floor because it kind of goes everywhere you've got it on your fingers but it's that really really fresh pineapple flesh juice love it absolutely love it but the more you take a sniff the more that kind of spicy element that clove cinnamon nutmeg starts to come through in the background but it's still pineapple up front and we've just got this little background spicy edge again as with the spice rum honey element not too prevalent vanilla not really there this is very much pineapple which is kind of what you want because it's a pineapple spice rum but you're starting to get in the background just a little addition a little extra complexity of that spicy element that's coming in And the balance is spot on. You really can tell that they've dialed that clove, that cinnamon, that nutmeg down. Nutmeg? I don't think it's got nutmeg. Why do I keep going on about nutmeg? The cinnamon and the clove. Touch of orange peel comes through, which is working really well with the pineapple. The spiciness is still there. Clove is still there, but it's very much on the background. Whereas on the spiced rum, it was clove up front. You could almost rank it in terms of clove at the top. You've got cinnamon, you've got the bit of the orange peel, the honey and the vanilla are sort of in the background. This is pineapple and honey and orange peel and then clove and cinnamon. And what they're doing is lifting the flavors up rather than being up front and giving you sort of like, I want clove, that's what I'm gonna get. I really, really like this. I love the plantation, I cannot help but compare this, and this is different enough, but it's fresh enough. The thing I loved about the plantation was you could tell that fresh pineapples have been used, and you can do that, you can absolutely tell with this as well. Fresh pineapples have been used. It's not a concentrate, it's not flavoring. There are some flavored rums out there, pineapple flavored, passion fruit rums, all of this lot, that just, you instantly know it's artificial. Straight away, it's like, no, they, they have not used fresh fruit here. You really can tell that they have but it's got that nice little extra added element of the spiciness there as well to make things interesting. Mm. So there's a restaurant near me, a Brazilian steakhouse called Caramba in Selby near where I live. And one of my favorite dishes that they do, now I don't really like pineapple, I'm not a big fan of it, and yet I love the plantation, I love this, and at Caramba, they do, so it's all the big swords with meat on it that they cook on a grill, and then they basically chop the meat off the sword and put it on your plate, but they also do, whole pineapples that they roll in cinnamon sugar, essentially, and then stick that under the grill. So if you get the outside bit, in fact, it's not cinnamon sugar, it's literally just cinnamon. So you get a really fresh, it's still kind of cool in the middle because they are just grilling the outside of it to like caramelize that, sh that cinnamon. So you get a really fresh, really juicy pineapple chunk, like slice of pineapple, but you get that lovely soft cinnamon not crackling, not coating, but it, re it is like a dusting of cinnamon on the outside and it works absolutely brilliant. And this really reminds me of it. A little bit spicier, um, you know, for, for the restaurant to do an equivalent of this, they would have to crush cloves or stud it with cloves as well as the cinnamon, but it really is close. You've got a lovely fresh sweet juiciness that's not overly sweet, not sickly sweet. And also that nice spiciness that's just lifting everything, just adding complexity. It's brilliant stuff. It's really, really good. Mm. So I love the bottles as well. I think they look absolutely fantastic. Um, nice and chunky. They feel really good. Nice labeling. It looks really classy. Um, so, you know, great present as well. Um, they are uh, at the moment coming in at $36.99. They've just arrived on the shelves. Uh, $36.99 each, exactly the same price for both. Uh, they are available through our website, www.spiritspecialist.com. We do offer UK nationwide delivery. Uh, and you're also more than welcome to come into the shop. And I still have plenty at the moment, if I don't drink it all, um, of the piña and the uh, spiced rum available to try if you want to try before you buy. But I do highly, highly recommend them. They are absolutely fantastic. Yorkshire does it once again. God's own country. We can do no wrong. I say we. I'm not born and bred, but I feel I've been here long enough to be integrated into the community. Um, that is me done. I shall see you at the next one. Cheers. Cheers.